Hello and welcome to Digital Marketing. This course is part of the Jenkins MBA online program and part of the Poole College of Management at North Carolina State University. My name is Bill Rand and I'm going to be your instructor for this course. I'm an assistant professor of business management with a specialty in marketing and computer science here at North Carolina State University. I want to jump right into the fact that this course is all about why digital market is exciting, why it's changing the way the world is, why it makes us think the world in different ways as marketers, why it makes us think about how to interact with our consumers in different ways, and why it provides us with new and powerful tools to reach out to those consumers. And for me and for many, right, digital marketing really represents an intersection of a lot of powerful ideas that are converging together. It's where social science meets technology. It's where, where our understanding of the way people talk to each other, how they interact, and how they address and discuss the products, services, and needs they have about the world intersects with the ability for them to use technology to have those conversations and for marketers to insert themselves in that conversations where necessary and where, and where wanted in order to advocate for those needs, right? So uh, for instance, with Twitter, you have people who are able to talk to each other about things that they never were able to discuss before because they simply couldn't meet up with those people, right? So technology has made that possible it also has made it possible for a marketer to provide access to resources that those people might not have had otherwise. Right? It's where psychology meets information process. Psychology, especially consumer psychology, has provided us with interesting and new insights into the way the human mind works when interacting with uh, a consumer environment and a retail environment and service environment and many different environments. Right? But the way that happens is that they're processing information that's being presented to them in a variety of different formats. And we need to be able to understand that information processing and we need to be able to capitalize it on it within the digital domain in order to truly achieve the goals that we as a marketer want to do. Right? It's where design meets engineering. Now, my background is actually more on the engineering side, and I slowly made my uh, migration over to the business side of things, right? And so I understand that there's a beauty in designing the perfect piece of code and coming up with that greatest app that like does something that no other app can do because the way it pulls data from 15 different sources, puts it all together, and figures out the exact solution. But all of that engineering is useless if, in fact, the app looks terrible and consumers don't want to interact with it. If it's a kludgy dynamics, if the user experience is awful, right, then they're just not going to interact with it. On the other hand, if the app looks absolutely beautiful, it's the most perfect piece of artwork ever done, but then crashes every 10 seconds, then that's also not going to solve any problems, right? And so it really you need to have these two things working together hand in hand to really kind of uh, meet the total goals of a digital marketing uh, expert, right? Uh, it's also where sociology meets innovation. The sociology is the study of how groups of individuals develop norms and interact with each other in interesting and new ways. And with the development of innovative and new ways of doing business, right, they have to adapt and reach those goals, right? Before the invention of Uber or, or Airbnb, would anyone have thought of sharing their house or their car with a total stranger? In many cases, the answer is no. But because of the fact that we have innovation, developing new trust mechanisms, new ways for us to exchange ideas, we actually alter the sociology of the situation. Right? And of course, all this is being driven by constant change and permanent evolution. Things are always altering, and the one thing we know about digital marketing is that this course will look different tomorrow and the day after, or 10 years from now, than it does right now. Right? And as a result, things are constantly and forever changing in this space. Now, uh, we're going to talk about this through the lens of the growth of new media. And new media I use generically to describe all the different ways that we're using to communicate with each other, right? Um, social media is obviously a big component of that, and we're going to hit social media right off the bat in this course, and we're going to talk about it again and again throughout the course, right? But there's other ways that traditional media is changing as well. For instance, brick and mortar stores are no longer as necessary as they are because of the growth of websites. You know, Amazon was the first one to show us that we can profitably make money on the web in very interesting and unique ways uh, that, that leave behind brick and mortar stores in many respects. On the other hand, there's new and interesting ideas coming along the lines of click and bricks, where you have online stores that are complemented by um, offline stores. Right? Email is replacing direct mail in almost every situation, right? Then we have these email uh, campaigns that go out, that interact with consumers, uh, that can provide them with new and interesting details that are direct mail, uh, just while well, direct mail is just getting ignored, right? 
We have display ads, right, that are shown on different websites, they're shown on in apps, they're shown all over the place. Um, and these are replacing and, and, try, and, and trying to supplement the circulars, billboards, uh, subway advertising in many cases, right? TV advertising, still critical. Commercial still a huge investment for a lot of marketers out there. But on the other hand, online video is growing and growing and growing and faster every day. And we're going to talk about that right off the bat in many respects. Uh, but as a result of that, we need to think about how do we develop ads that are better for an online video context as opposed to a TV ad context, right? Radio used to be king when it came to audio in a lot of places, but now podcasts and, uh, and, and, and streaming music services have become more and more important. How do we develop ads for those? Do they look the same as radio ads? Can you interact with them? You're viewing them and listening to them on a different device than you would on a, a normal radio program. So maybe there's a new and different ways to interact with them. And of course, newspapers have been dying for about 20 years now in terms of their traditional business models. We see the growth of Twitter, Facebook, Snapchat, blogs, all trying to provide us with new ways to interact with the news. We need to figure out as marketers how to interact with those forums, how to place ourselves in that conversation and make sure that we're interacting with the consumers who want to hear our messages. Right? And traditionally, the vast majority of marketing was focused around the ideas of content creation. How can we pair ourselves with content creators, people like the New York Times, CNN, things like this, in order to make sure that our message is being displayed next to theirs? But then we've seen the growth recently of content curation, things like Reddit, things like uh, the Huffington Post, right, where they are not actually creating a lot of content themselves, but instead aggregating other content around them, right? What does that mean in terms of a, a um, marketer? Well, it means, it means that I don't know who's creating that content necessarily, even though my marketing message must, it might be displayed next to it. What does that mean in terms of challenges and in terms of benefits that we might receive throughout it? How can we use all these different media in order to maximize the consumer value and maximize return on investment for our firms? Social isn't the only uh, media in this space, right? As we just discussed, we've talked through a number of different ones. But it is a huge player. And I always like to point out that social, when we think of it, we think of things like big brands, like Twitter, Facebook, right, things like this. But there are hundreds, dozens, at least, players in this space. And so I always like to bring up the social uh, Lumascape. This is generated by Luma Partners since their 2016 Lumascape, indicating all the different social media players, right, that are in this space. Uh, and things from Twitter and Facebook on the consumer facing end, you know, all the way back to the advertising platforms that exist, to the social intelligence platforms like Intensity, uh, Trender, things like this that provide you with insight into uh, companies and uh, into the what people are talking about in the social space that is out there, right? Um, and I, uh, you know, it'd be bad for me not to mention that this is just a a top level view of social, right? This is a view of social as if you're looking at all the players who cover the entire field. However, for any particular individual vertical, there's a whole bunch of other players who concentrate on that vertical. I happen to be a craft beer drinker. I like a good beer every now and then. Um, there are at least four different craft beer social media websites that are consumer facing that, that play a big role in this space. Beer Advocate, Pintly, Rate Beer, and Untapped, right? All these allow for the exchange of content. And there's, there's more than that, I know. But you know, this is just an example of how whenever you're starting to think about developing a social media strategy, you not only have to consider all the traditional players that you would, but also the players that are specific to your vertical. So what do you do with all this, right? The growth of social media has been a huge, right? There are about 16% about of adult users, uh, uh, adult in individuals in the United States in 2006 were users of social media, primarily Facebook, right? 10 years later, that number's at 79%, right? We've seen gigantic growth in this space to the point where it's almost saturating the entire um, adult US consumer population, right? Of course, the ongoing headache for marketers, according to Deborah Wilson Williamson, is that social networking is such a powerful consumer activity, but it's incredibly challenging as a medium. We are going to spend this course talking about what the challenges are, what the benefits are, and how you can mitigate the challenges while exacerbating the benefits as much as possible. And in fact, about four years ago, I did a survey with Mzinga and Teradata Aster where we looked at asking a bunch of uh, individuals in firms who are in charge of social technologies, what they use social for, 
what they were interested in measuring and what was presented, preventing them from doing a better job with social, right? What we found is that, you know, a lot of them were using for things you might expect, branding, marketing experience, customer experience, collaboration within the company itself, and sales, right? And they were, all, they were very interested in measuring three main in interaction outcomes, right? Customer feedback, how often were they interacting, how much were customers giving them uh, feedback, user behavior on content trends, what were their consumers talking about, what were they interested in, and of course, return on investment, how much bang were they getting for their buck when it came down to it. But the same firms told us that most of them were not using social to its fullest potential technology, and that 77% were not, in fact, measuring in any way any kind of return on investment. Right? Most firms actually feel that analyzing large-scale social data is important, but they also feel they lack the knowledge and education to do so. This course, and many like it, are trying to solve some of that problem, trying to give you the tools to meet a need that exists within the industry. So what are we gonna cover in this course? We're gonna talk about digital strategy. We're gonna talk about social media. We're gonna talk about analytics and optimization, right? We're gonna, because a lot of my belief as to why digital is such a powerful world is because of the fact that almost everything and anything anyone does within the digital space can be measured, analyzed, and we can determine how to better use that knowledge for our marketing guidance, right? Um, we'll talk about search. Right? And how people find things on the web, how they find things on social, how they, how they interact with those things once they find them. We'll talk about user experience and website development. We'll talk about content and writing for the web, how that's different than it is for traditional media. We'll talk about display advertising, email advertising, um, videos, uh, and mobile as well. And the goal for the course is that by the end of the course, you should be able to explain the importance of digital marketing to any firm for their particular context. You should be able to define and compare up-to-date terms, methods, and technology in the digital space. And you should be able to create a profitable digital marketing strategy. In fact, one of the main projects of this course, um, and in fact, more than half your grade of this course, will be determined by creating a digital marketing strategy for a local business organization. Um, as a result of this, you should be developing leadership, teamwork, and communication skills through that group project. And you should be, we'll spend multiple efforts to nurture creativity and critical thinking skills on the domain of digital marketing. I will be pulling examples literally out of the news, out, out of, the news of the week in order for us to discuss and talk about within the class. Uh, and so that is what I hope that you will accomplish in this course. And with all that being said, welcome to it.